Hi, my name is Lisa. I am the oldest sister in Out of Eden. My name is Andrea. Um, I'm the middle sister. My name is Danielle. I'm the youngest, the most random of the sisters. We are in Out of Eden, and we've been singing together for eight and a half years yeah, now. Almost nine. Scary almost nine enough. years. And we live in Nashville, Tennessee, where we've been for 11 Long years. years. <laughs> so we almost have to call ourselves Nashvillians. Almost. Nashville. Not quite. Yeah, because we're from Richmond, Virginia, and we like to claim VA, because even though it's south of the Mason-Dixon line, it's still kind of the East Coast, so mm -hmm. <laughs> we like to yeah. claim that. Yeah, we grew up in Virginia. We grew up singing with our mom, and um, just we would be her background dancers yes. and kind of try to harmonize. That's a try on my account. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she moved to to Nashville mm -hmm. because she was directing the Fish Jubilee Singers, which they are awesome. Yeah. And um, she kind of was like, now you're going to be singers. Yeah. And I, we didn't really agree with that too much. No, we fought it. We fought no, it. No, it was like, we just wanted to go to public school. We had been homeschooled <laughs> all of our life. And we that was our big dream. Finally, we'll be able to, you know, actually interact with other people <laughs> and go to school. Um, so our big dream was, you know, cheerleading, mm -hmm. basketball, track. Track, yeah. Um, and my mom had a definitely a different plan. Totally and so did God. Plan. And uh, so she basically had us, you know, doing talent shows and doing demos and yeah. practice, practice, practice and all then, the time. Yeah, then we realized that we like to dance better than we like to sing. Mm -hmm. So we started dancing for different Christian artists. I remember... Plus we were broke, so we needed yeah, to make some Yeah, the money. extra cash really helped out a lot. <laughs> and then, um, remember when we were dancing for Michael Peace? Mm -hmm. the a rap artist, Christian rap artist named Michael Peace. And um, we were practicing for him. I remember... at. The Arbors in Arbors Nashville, of Tennessee. Hollow. Yeah. yeah. And DC Talk was just so happened to be practicing for the Dove Awards at the same place. And um, was it was one of our friends was like, okay, this is Toby. You all have to sing for him right now. And then I guess it was two years from that one practice with Michael mm -hmm. Peace at the Arbors um, <laughs> when he started Goatee and asked us to be his first dad. Yes, he remembered us. Mm -hmm. 1994, we went on tour with DC Talk and. Yeah. Um, the rest is history. That's all she wrote. <laughs> yeah. Thus, the story of how to be. <laughs> when we first, like, we always were really close and always hung out together and everything like that. But um, when we went on tour with DC Talk, we had a 1975 Chevy van that was carpeted on the inside. Completely pimped out. I slept yeah. in the front seat and they shared the back seat. And it was our first time just day in and day out being that close mm -hmm. and so yeah, that was, was rough. yeah it was pretty rough that's Real when rough. we were just started to bicker and argue and we're still trying to establish you know who we are as people around those ages but you know we're kind of melded together as out of eden mm -hmm. so we used to fight all the time right. all the time and we would like go on stage like mad, mad crying, <laughs> crying. crying. <laughs> especially me because i got picked on whatever yes. whatever it's <laughs> so not true yeah totally not true but we used to like you know, argue, well, I don't know, and go on stage, you know, and have to try to sing and try and to... And Lovely Day was our first song. Uh, yeah. Our so we had these red, puffy eyes <laughs> and just be like, I hate you, I hate you. Lovely Day, <laughs> wake up in the morning. <laughs> and it just was not healthy. No. No, but, um, you know, we were blessed with a, um, a tour chaplain whose name was Michael Guido. And he sat us down and he said, you know, before you're sisters um, in blood, you've got to be sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we really thought about that. You know, we'd never go up to someone and say, I can't stand you. Get away from me, even if we thought that in our minds. <laughs> but um, we really learned how to, you know, really love each other as um, sisters in Christ. And yeah. Respect. I think that's something we've learned. And, Definitely. Yeah. We learned respect. And now... I think it's cool because we're actually friends. Mm -hmm. We're not just sisters. I mean, I definitely recognize that they're my older sisters. But it's like, <laughs> we... Right. I Whatever. do. I am so respectful to my elders. Her elders, though? She is the bossiest do you hear one this of us girl? all, okay? Yeah, she is. She wins the bossy award. Even more than... I used to win it, but she no, took over she somehow. Took over. I don't know what happened. But you guys, they are lying to you. Do not believe them right now. Okay. okay, just keep watching. You'll see. So we get along really, really well. <laughs> yes. <know>? Never argue. <laughs> now we just debate. You know what I'm saying? We just... We tend to disagree, but it doesn't go anywhere close to where it used to. And I think one thing that helped us... Um, just learning about our personalities mm -hmm. and learning um, who we were. We took mm -hmm. a personality test, 
and we found out Tessa, we Tessa <laughs> yeah and we found different things about ourselves like according I'm ISTP personality which is an introvert uh, sensing thinking personality type where Andrea is a ISFJ ISFJ so the thinking part of my personality might, might not understand the feeling part like I'm like you know what well, this is the fact and this is how it goes and she's like well I feel and you don't think about this and so we once we learned kinda how each other worked it was a lot easier to respect our differences instead of just not understand them mm -hmm. the three of us are extremely different I think more different than any sisters I've ever met. What kind of music do you like? Um, at the moment, I just don't even have time to listen to music. But <laughs> when I do, I listen to lots of world music. Um, mostly salsa, mostly Latin music. Because I think I have Latin, like, people running <laughs> through my blood, even though I'm, like, so far from being Hispanic, but I would love to. Um, I also listen to a lot of... Um, Fred Hammond. Mm -hmm. I love Fred Hammond. He's like my number one, even though I don't have his new album yet. Which is Me really either. strange. But we do. You do? Uh huh. Okay, I'll have it by the time. <laughs> I'll have it. Like, I'm gonna, gotta go get it. Um, you like, yeah, a lot of salsa. A lot of salsa, a lot of world music. She is salsetta, Miss Salsa. Yeah, I listen to that all day. Um, but I do like, I mean, I love R&B. Like, if I were to pick between rock and R&B, it would definitely be R&B mm -hmm. and rap. So mm -hmm. I'd say I'm much more in the R&B person of the group. I find like I've been listening to a lot of music with no words lately. Because so much music that I like, like I love rap and I love R&B, but it's just sometimes it's just such a struggle with the content of certain yeah. things that I just find myself listening to just a lot of um, just DJ records and just chilled out sessions, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I just make up my own words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, you know, a lot, I've also been listening to a lot of gospel um, just a lot of choir music even, just stuff that I didn't really used to get into that much, but just a lot of choir music mm -hmm. and, um, and music with no words. <laughs> yeah. I guess I've been listening to um, a lot of gospel, too. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say what you, you know, also listen to. Oh, I'll get there. <laughs> I listen to a lot of different stuff. Um, choir music, gospel, um, a lot of... Um, I like the inspo stations with the Rachel Lampa and, and Nicole C. Mullins and you know, I like listen to that radio station. Um, but I like I like a lot of emo music and a little bit of hardcore and um, I like real, real down south rap. So <laughs> it's again Hard to find good, clean stuff, so I listen to a lot of just the A lot beat. of grit. Just T -E -T -E -E -T -E -E. a lot of double N E S E double N. We don't even know how to spell it. I don't know how to spell it. Double S now, double E now, spell it out in Tennessee. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Christian down south music, and um, yeah, it's about it. Like Brit rock. Yeah, Brit rock. I like a lot. Um, I'm still looking for good Brit rock other than Delirious. I love them. But, you know, so if you're British and you do rock, please send me something. You know, we have some weird hobbies for girls, I think. Um, not yeah. a lot of our girlfriends have the same hobbies as we do. Mm -mm. Like, um, Lisa, I'm a football fan, but Lisa's just kind of an all-around sports guru. <laughs> no, not. Yes, she yeah. knows. She knows she compared really to is. them, she, yes. Okay, who, who, won to the, who won the Heisman Trophy last year? Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> I don't, don't put me on the spot. I'm not a, I'm not a sports, my cousin, well, she's my best friend, but I call her my cousin. She's really the sports guru. And like five years ago, I probably wouldn't have been able to tell you whether Deion Sanders was a running back or a cornerback, but she moved in with me and maybe start going to the early service so we could be home from church in time to watch <laughs> NFL that's countdown on ESPN. Do that's the way to do it. And that's how I've learned everything I know about football is through her. So... Um, my favorite football team is, they're the Jets, and they're not doing too well right now. Um, How is that your favorite team? I, the Jets. And I cheer for the Titans. Yeah. What? <laughs> did you know that? No, I didn't know I didn't that. didn't know that. Learn, learn something, something new every yes, day. You do. But I definitely cheer for the Titans because we're from Nashville. But I do, I just, I don't know. It's New York teams. I like the Yankees, and I like, I like the, the Jets. I like the Yankees. Basketball, the Knicks are my team Sixers basketball. all the way. And not just because of Iverson, but Dr. J. Also, and I do like Iverson. <laughs> Leave it at that. <laughs> so funny. When they talk about sports, I check out. I'm like, 
I, like I, I, was, I am so not a sports fan. I was fan. watching I, Monday Night Football the other day, and, and, and there was, like, a, a call that I didn't agree with, and I was trying to, like, explain to Andre why I didn't think that was pass interference. And she's just like, I, just like, I go, Andre, I mean, I, forget it. <laughs> she's and like, she gives you this look I when said, you talk about sports. Listen. Like, I don't care. Yeah, I, I just, I have other things that I do. Okay, care. what's your hobbies then? Um, well, uh, Danielle here likes to classify me as a nerd, which I definitely am not. But yeah. I do prefer the a cool reading. nerd, but a nerd all yes. the same. I do prefer, She's a like, student of learning. I am. I'm a student of knowledge. <laughs> I am. Um, I love Discovery Health Channel. I love TLC. Love um, TLC. Trading Spaces. Trading Spaces. I, I love the to just story. read and learn. The baby story. <laughs> I guess I'm just an, I guess I'm just like that closet intellectual. I would say some of my hobbies include. I actually love to follow movies, even if I don't go see them, like I like to know what they're about. <laughs> um, and photography, um, I like to do a lot of photo shoots of um, weird and cool looking people. <laughs> and um, I like uh, to make my own clothes, that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Danielle's all things fashion, all things... Um, pertaining like I feel yeah. like the Bible yeah. are all things pertaining to godliness she's all things pertaining to godliness and fashion <laughs> <laughs> at the same time um, she like our like we're both interested in photography hers from a more more of a fashion, fashion mind more like a journalism yeah standpoint. photojournalist um, it's just it's cool because we all kind of like the same things mm -hmm. like I we're interested in fashion and she's interested in sports and you know it kind of all meshes together but we all have our kind of classifications mm -hmm. of those areas so we can support each other but it's not the I know exact my same hobby thing is indie shows oh yeah that's yeah, my hobby definitely. oh you have helped me figure out what my hobby is thank <laughs> you um, my hobby is going to indie shows I like to drive and go see whatever band noise ratcheted me without you um, further seems forever Juliana theory whole bunch of bands that, that I've never, I've even never heard, heard of. of. <laughs> I've never heard like, of. Ew. Nor have I ever been invited to go to one of these yeah, shows. I did. I did. Yeah. I did Wait, invite you. Did, I invite invited. them all the time. They're just like, I don't think I don't that remember. I come. <laughs> I don't remember. It was probably she caught me on a really bad hair day or something like that. So <laughs> but I couldn't fit in. But that's my hobby. There you go. Yeah. And I like to travel. We all like to travel. Mm -hmm. We all have like our favorite cities across the globe and the cities that we want to go to. Like mine definitely is Brazil, as far as a country. That's my favorite, but I want to go to Italy. Have to go to Italy. If you're out there we're and you want out of Italy. Eden to sing in Italy, We're supposed please. to go, but I don't know what happened to that. Yeah, we're supposed to go, but Rio, I love Rio, Salvador, mm -hmm. Brazil. Salvador. Um, Jamaica was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what else do New York? Oh, Norway. And Norway. Sweden. I bought Sweden these shoes the in best. Norway. I bought these I shoes bought in this Norway. In Norway. I bought these in Norway. Great shopping. <laughs> I bought my whole outfit in Norway. <laughs> yeah, there's that great. Is so mm -hmm. sad you did. Not the jeans. No, not the jeans. The jeans, but... they were um, on the internet. <laughs> I <bought> the <laughs> jeans on the internet. You know, when anyone asks us who is the most influential person in our life or who has been, mm -hmm. um, we always talk about our mom because she is um, a really strong woman of God mm -hmm. and uh, just really taught us um, at a young age how to just really know God and how to have a relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember her always making us read um, Psalms, Proverbs, and a couple of chapters in the New Testament every, every day, day, like yeah. no exceptions. And um, people ask us how we know so many scriptures and how we have such a good foundation in our faith. And I really think that that yeah, is because a lot of, of it's our a credit mom. to her. I remember she would even, when we were young, she would make us go witness to people. <laughs> um, we're talking anybody. She mm -hmm. would be like, go, go tell them about Jesus. Go tell them about <laughs> Jesus. One time, remember when we were in the mall? This is definitely one of Do our most embarrassing it? moments. Yes. We were in the mall. I was tiny, and I totally remember. We were doing a salvation skit, mm -hmm. and I was this crazy person. I think, did I like get saved? Remember I, my yeah, whole thing? You were like the, the devil. Oh, yeah. no, I was the devil. <laughs> and Danielle was like the bad friend. Yeah. <laughs> and Lisa was the main was, character. I, was I the person that was I was searching? Know the Lord. I you was were searching. searching. Yes, I was the person that was searching. And yeah. I would like go in the malls and have on, I was like, eight maybe had on like a leotard and that's it because <laughs> <laughs> i had this black leotard on because i was supposed to be the devil 
Totally oh, remember that. Oh my gosh. That. Yeah, and um, our parents almost got arrested. It was so yeah. embarrassing and so sad. We were being persecuted for Jesus. I remember one time I was on stage and what tour was it? Was what it? Was it? I don't know what happened. It was I one tour. Like, I don't know the story. Story. <laughs> The water guns. Was that? Oh, that was on oh, um, DC was, Talk um, Free at last night. Yeah, okay. The last, free, the last show of any tour. If any of you guys go to the last show and really weird things are happening, that's last show pranks. It's a tradition. Mm -hmm. And uh, on our set, Toby found it in his heart to dress in a wig and spray me with a water gun on the last show. And I was so caught by surprise, and I have no ability to play anything off that I jumped off stage and chased him. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much We're like, okay, how bye, I Lisa. Am. We'll finish We're the like, song. Yeah, we'll just go it. ahead and sing the rest of this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a lot of embarrassing moments um, on and off stage. I think. Um, one of the most embarrassing moments that happened to me was on an airplane. <clears throat> it, this was a long time ago, granted. I was probably like 14 or 15 years old, and um, I was going to the bathroom, and I had a skirt on, and I went to the bathroom, and I was probably like in the middle aisle, I mean the middle row about halfway down. Oh so I go gosh. to the bathroom, and I come back, and I'm looking for my seat, and I'm looking for Danielle because I was sitting by her, and I'm turning around, and, tur and this guy is like looking at me like, like disgusted and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm looking for my seat. And uh, I turn around, I find my seat, I go and I, you know, kind of, you know, stand up, push my skirt and I realize that my skirt was in my socking the whole time. <laughs> and I didn't even want to look at that guy when I got off the plane. That's um, awful. Yeah, it's definitely yeah she has the most embarrassing, embarrassing moments, like mm -hmm. the one where um, the stack fell off of our shoe and uh, yeah, like flew yeah, off of her shoe. Like this. Yeah, like, like this that. Part. I believe hit someone in the audience. We couldn't finish the show. Like we were laughing so hard we couldn't sing. It was mm -hmm. bad. I love what we do because I love that we're able to do music that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm so happy that God didn't call us to like sing polka music. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything against that. I have no problem. There's a lot of great polka artists out there. Um, but that's just not what we do, you know, and I just, I, it's so cool because we can dance and we can show people that, you know, we can have fun as Christians, mm -hmm. we can have fun, we can dance, and it doesn't have to be in a suggestive way. I don't know how many parents come up to us and they're like, we thank you guys so much for the way you dress, mm -hmm. for showing our daughters that it's possible to look cool and be modest at the same time, for dancing and keeping it clean and keeping it holy, yeah. none of that video stuff that's out there. Definitely. You know, we... We know that we're role models, and instead of pushing that aside and saying, well, don't look at me, I'm, you know, it's, Jesus. it's, yeah, I'm just human. We really want to set a standard that mm -hmm. people can see and see, Definitely. hey, there is a way to live holy. Definitely. There is a way to live righteous. There is a way to be godly and fun and cool and really keep things straight. Um, we don't want to send any mixed signals like, um, like, no sex before marriage, but yet we're naked all the time. You know, mm -hmm. that's just... That's not us, and I think right. that's definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. And not only ha is that something that God's called us to, but that's something that God's called us to share with definitely. lots of other people. Mm -hmm. definitely. You know, I think one of the reasons why we're so strong now is because we had some key women in our life to really, to really help us when we were growing yeah. up. And uh, and so, even now, you and know, even to now, look up it's to. very important to have mentors and older people to really, to really help you with your walk with God. Yeah. Um, so we really know that we're role models, mm -hmm. and um, with this album, you know, we really just um, wanted to be relevant to um, our fans. And so what we did is we asked, um, we went to um, youth groups, youth pastors, mm -hmm. trouble City teen ministries. homes, all kinds of things where we could find our audience and ask them what they would want to hear on an album. Mm -hmm. And we came up with topics like... Um, Sex and dating. Um, um, dealing how to deal with rape and abuse. Um, parental relationships or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how can you tell if God still loves you? Mm -hmm. Destiny, um, purpose. Yeah, how do you tell yeah. your friends that you're different? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is where we came up with different now. Mm -hmm. um, also, we felt free on this record to talk about our experience with our father um, and wrote that on Rolling Stone. It was just really like a Hear My Dear album, an album that was dedicated to our fans mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, take everyday life situations and try to bring God's perspective into it. Yeah. Another big thing we covered is self-esteem. Yeah. And um, I remember someone came up to us, it was a, a young lady, maybe about 20, something mm -hmm. like that, and she said, I can't explain it, when I listen to your record, this sense of empowerment comes over me. 
And that's exactly what we we're going for mm -hmm. with Showpiece, just to let women know it doesn't matter what size you are, it doesn't matter what people say about you, mm -hmm. you know, you need to find who you are in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. That's right. in the Word of God, That's right. and not in your surroundings, not in the magazines. Um, just a couple days ago, we did a show, and this woman came up to me, and maybe she was maybe 40, 45, and she just started bawling and just was like, you know, your song, Show Pieces, really touched me, because there's a line where we say, um, size 24, size 10, or size 30, and she was like, I'm the 24 and I've never felt accepted before I heard that song. Wow. I mean, she's 45 wow. and has been dealing with this her entire life. Wow. And I was just so grateful to God that he put us in a position mm -hmm. where we could be role models for someone older than us. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is that is so God mm -hmm. right there. Definitely. That's and awesome. we want to take advantage of that. Um, we just started working on this. Well, we just finished actually yeah. working on this video that we're really, really excited about. Mm -hmm. It's a video for girls where we cover six topics. Um, section, sex, bleh, dating and sexual purity, <laughs> image and beauty, where we cover like modesty. fashion and modesty, um, parental relationships, um, abuse, destiny, destiny and purpose, security, security and acceptance. acceptance. Yeah, and it's just an awesome thing that we did that God blessed us to um, work with Interlink on this video. And we've got four of our friends that are in high school um, that just represent. Um, just the difference, you know, in youth group kids. And we'd sit down and just tackle these topics. Yeah. God used a lot of it to talk to me. And in talking to the um, to girls after the video, just seeing how God healed them. And I really believe that this is something that can not only be used to help the people that were in the video, but mm -hmm. it can be used to help millions yeah. of young girls out there. Definitely. Yeah. You know, one thing that I learned on this is that it also helped us stay relevant to our fans mm -hmm. and to our audience and to the younger generation mm -hmm. because you know once you get out of high school sometimes you can forget yeah. you know the struggles that you have in it and uh, just being around them just really helped